Okay, guys, I'm going to finish up chapter three. I don't know why it cut off on me, but it says, but are you going to go to stop going to school? The docu documentary filmmaker asked. I have to, otherwise my parents and the school will be held responsible. That's what the radio mullah had said. So if you continue to get an education, the Taliban will go after your principal, your parents, more schools will be bombed? Malala glanced at her father, pain clear on her face. She nodded. Hundreds of schools were already demolished. I didn't want to give in, she said. I want to get my education and I want to become a doctor. Malala palm, palmed her face, pressed her fingers into her eyes and sniffled her, stifled her forming tears. Her father comforted her. A few moments passed before she could look at the camera again. But they cannot fully stop me. I will continue to learn if it's at home, school, or somewhere else. Malala's father said, I keep hoping they'll change their minds about closing the girls' school. He tried to turn on the radio to see if there was any new information. There was only static. The Pakistan army must have blocked the Taliban's broadcast, that night at least. The next morning, Malala awoke in her red-colored sheets with a heavy heart. She also woke with a camera trained on her again. Be natural, the documentary maker told her. That was kind of hard when they followed her everywhere. They filmed her as she brushed her teeth. They filmed her as she prayed. It's forbidden to fidget during prayer, so it was awkward to know there was a camera on her, but she couldn't look at it. In the main room, as Malala ate her breakfast um, of chopped tea, bread, and fried eggs, her father glanced out the window, with, then threw a shawl over the camera to hide it. The Taliban wouldn't be happy if they saw the video equipment. Though it was too dangerous to film Malala's walk to school, the camera crew joined Malala behind the walls surrounding the Kusha school. As a special assembly, Malala screamed over the noise of helicopters, Swat Valley! Classmates raised their fists in the air. Long live! She repeated. They responded. The helicopters continued to make a loud chopping noise. The end of the day came too quickly. Normally school dismissed at one o'clock, but Malala and her friends stayed until three. Malala was determined that the Kushka school's bell would be the last to stop chiming. They said goodbye. With her right hand, Malala clasped a friend's hand. With her left, she held her friend's arm. They hugged. God willing, we will meet, okay? Malala said. Her friend replied, God willing. Then Malala left school, not sure if she'd ever go back. Okay, guys, what do you think is going to happen? Make a prediction. Do you think she's going to get to go back? Do you think she's going to have to, to learn at home? What do you think? Make a list of the things that she's done so far to be brave and make a couple of predictions what you think may happen in the rest of the story. All right, guys, that was chapter four. Sorry it cut me off in the middle, but here's the end. All right, bye, guys.